Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll change this page to support more languages and see how uh, the calendar and the other implicit components so, uh, support different languages. For now, first, let me show you the calendar. So here it is in English. If we change, go back and add, make French our high priority language and hit refresh, you'll see that it's localized the French calendar. So this is, this is actually a really cool thing. I, I like the fact that all this works um, out of the box with the ASP.NET components. However, it can get tedious testing all your languages by going through this dialog. So let's see, we need a combo box next to the label button. And I have that drop-down list already here on the clipboard It's because it's a little bit long. I threw in just a bunch of languages, um, um, English and German, two variations of English, two variations of uh, French, um, and a couple of other languages. So now let's, uh, before we continue, let me change that. No longer need the word English, let's call it use this language. And the French translation of that would be okay, save those two. So far, so good. So now we'll have a drop down list, and when it's clicked, we want to handle it and change our overall ambient thread and cult thread culture info. Now, to do that, we're going to have to write a little bit of code. So, so far, we've been able to do some fairly complex things by uh, without writing any code. But now we need to uh, do a little bit more work. We're going to be using the um, a couple of a couple of libraries here. So system.threading and system.globalization, and we're going to override a uh, a page a page method called initialize culture. And inside of here, this gets called fairly early on in the page construction. What we want to do is first examine and see if the language variable has been set from the drop-down combo. So we'll put that in a variable called lang. We'll set that equal to the request language language one. The reason I'm not doing uh, language one dot you know get selected value is that it's the first time the page is loaded that's not going to be set, and this is just a simpler way to handle it. So I'll have. Um, it's possible for the first time through for this not to be set to anything. So I'll say if is not language, if language is not nothing, or language equal to empty string. So in other words, if it's been set, then I want to set my um, my current thread, current UI culture equal to set it equal to a new culture info based on the language that's been selected and I also have to set the current culture two different things uh, the lang UI culture is used for uh, resources and current culture is used for translation or mapping dates and currencies and this is a little bit more specific than just the language we need a language and the uh, locale or the language plus the location and together that's called a locale and that is generated from the culture info has a method on it that will create a specific culture from a generic language. So in other words, if we just pass in EN for English, by default this will translate it to EN US. If we pass in FR, it will translate it to FR French versus French Canadian. And there are subtle differences between the two and I'll show you. Um, that's really it at this point. So we can do that and let's go back and do one more thing. We want to set this label at the bottom of the page, right here. We want to set that equal to some currency, do some kind of currency conversion or currency calculation. So I'll add a handler for when the page loads. Um, I need a variable dim money as uh, as a decimal value equal to. I just need a big number. And now we'll set our label. I forgot what I called it our currency label. Set the currency label text equal to... Now, if I just converted that money to a string, we would just get 65545.42. But if, let's say we want to treat that as a money type, it needs to be converted to the language that and formatting that's appropriate to that particular locale, which is set up here. So we would do 0 colon C is the string formatter and pass in our money.
and that should be good. We'll save these two and view this in a browser. Okay, so remember by default our, our language was set to English. If we go and change this back to, I'm sorry, by default our language was set to French. And you can see, not only do we get our, our correct localized resources, but the calendar and the format conversion worked. This is 65,000 euros in French, and they use a comma as a decimal separator and a space for their thousand separator. If we go back and change our default to English, and hit refresh, we get our localized version up here, and our thousands are separated by commas, decimals by period. This also works as well. If I change it to English UK, there's a subtle difference. In the UK, dates start on the first day of the week starts on a Monday. In English, it's a uh, US, it's a Sunday. And of course, they're using pounds, but we have the same decimal and, and current, uh, thousand separator. If we go to French Canada, same idea here, but the calendar is slightly different from French and French Canadian. And finally, if we do things like Hindi or Thai, we see a more complex uh, uh, calculation. Again, all that is handled for us with very little code and you can see that we can get local resources and global resources and with a little bit of programming we can even allow the user to choose their own languages.